Hallelujah. Amen. Let's do it better for the Sunday school. Amen. Amen. Awesome God. Awesome God. This is Christmas. This is what Christmas is all about. Amen. Praise God. Well, this morning I have the privilege to bring you the word of God this morning. Amen. Praise God. I don't know what to say after Sunday school has preached all my message. I might as well just sit down and we go home and enjoy Christmas. Amen. Praise God. God is good. It is Christmas time. Amen. Praise God. And this season is a season to be joyful. It's a season to celebrate the goodness of God in the land of the living is a season to celebrate God himself. Amen. Praise God. So I've only got 22 minutes and then we will close. Amen. Praise God. The title of my message as they have preached it, is Emmanuel God with us. Amen. Emmanuel God with us. Amen. Praise God. Let's take our reading. Um, I thank pastor for allowing us um, this opportunity to, to share the word of God with you. Amen. Praise God. Matthew chapter 1 and verse 23. Matthew chapter 1 and we're going to read a verse 23. As they have said it. Amen. Praise God. Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Amen. So that's the title of the message, God with us. Amen. Praise God. This morning, I'm just sharing something so brief and something so relevant in the times that we are living in, that if you are living on this planet earth and you have no Jesus with you, you cannot claim this and say, God is with me. God is with us because we have accepted him in our hearts as our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Praise God. Just like they related the story of Mary and Joseph, Mary found favor with God. He found, she found favor. She didn't do anything to deserve what she did. She just found favor with God. This is why we need to live ready, ready for the favor of God to visit us at any time, at any point in our life. So this story just says, behold. Behold, a virgin was with a child. I don't know what went in Mary's mind when the angel really told him that you're going to give birth to a son, but you will not have anything to do with this. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And this holy thing that you'll be bearing inside of you is God. This, you're going to be holding God all the days of your life. We saw the story when they came and looking for an inn, it, it, God had to order a census to happen according to Luke chapter 2. A census had to happen to lead Jesus, um, uh, Mary, and Joseph to be counted. They had to go back into their, into their relatives' place where they all got counted. It was a census that was orchestrated by God. It had to happen in Bethlehem. They moved from Nazareth to Bethlehem. When they got to Bethlehem, they think, oh, God has made everything good. Then it was time for the baby to come. They were not ready for it because home was in Nazareth, but they had to go to Bethlehem to give birth there. Amen. Praise God. When they got there, there was no room in the inn. Have you had a vision and you think, God, I've believed you for this. But when you get there, there is no provision. It's dry. Nothing is happening. And you said, but God, you moved me from point A to point B, but there's no provision in point B. They didn't know how it was going to happen. And it happens. On that very same day, they can't find a place. The only place they could find was in the inn. In the inn, there is no bed. In the inn, there is no comfort place. There is no hospital. There is no nurse. There is no midwife. There is nothing. It looks empty. Somebody might be going through life right now thinking, God, I can't see no provision whatsoever. I can't see a way out out of this situation. You said it. I held on to your word. And now what? What is going on in this place? Lo and behold, on that fateful night, Mary goes into labor. Where are we going to stay, Joseph? Oh, Joseph is a, is a, is a, is a good man. He's a good man. He carried Mary through, right through to Bethlehem, where they could be counted. 
And when they get there, labor pain starts. We are not home. We are not in a familiar place. There is no hospital, no midwife, no doctor, nothing. But this is a king I'm carrying. A king without no provision. Why, God? Why? The dream without any place to, to, to be fulfilled. A dream without any sign of, of where I'm going. Nothing is giving me a sign that this is of God. She goes into labor. Thank God for the inman that gave him the stable, at least to be among the animals, just to be comfortable. Just to be comfortable. A king was born in a manger. Does that make sense? A king born in a manger. He wears a royal crown, but he's born in a manger. Jesus, the greatest, the, the, the awesome God, the mighty God, the faithful king of glory, born in a manger, not even with clothes, not even with the first set of clothes. He had to be wrapped in a swaddling cloth. So that he can be presented. He was born a king in a manger. What does this tell us about Jesus? Though he was king, he became poor just for you and me. He became, he took the lowest point of birth. I've never heard of a human being born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling cloth. The first people to come and visit you are shepherds. The first people to see you be born are cows, are horses, animals around, moo, moo, all around. These are your first people to greet you into the world. Man, they are all like, wow, you know, there's a baby here. He had to be put in a manger. Why the manger? The manger was a place of feeding for the animals. So does that not tell us that Jesus is the word. If we don't feed on the word, if we don't feed, he is the word himself. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, verse 1, the word of God became it flesh and it dwelt among us. It became flesh and it dwelt among us. So Mary just didn't give birth to a child. He gave birth to the word. He gave birth to the word. And because Jesus is the greatest shepherd, the Bible tells us that he's the greatest shepherd that ever lived. He's the greatest shepherd. He says, I am a good shepherd. Does it make sense then that the first people to visit Jesus were shepherds? To come and welcome him into, into being a shepherd. They were the first people to come and greet Jesus. It was shepherds. It didn't just happen. It was shepherds that welcomed him into the world. It was the shepherds that then spread the word of God abroad. Amen. Praise God. So he was a shepherd born in a manger. Nothing of him was saying he was a king. Nothing at all. You could, you could just think it's an ordinary baby. But he was no ordinary baby. Amen. Praise God. He was our savior. He was our king. He was our king of kings and lord of lords. Then the wise men came with gifts. These gifts had to acknowledge him that this is the king. He, they had to tell the world that this, a king is born today. They had to bring what? Frankincense. They have to bring what? Man. They had to bring what? Gold. So all these frankincense was like incense to say God Behold your lamb. This is the highest sacrifice you can ever give us. Therefore, take the frankincense and burn the fragrance of the, fra of the incense. Let it go up to heaven because you have done us a great thing. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Number two, they gave him what? Gold. Gold has to speak about his royalty. This is royalty that is being born. We are coming with gold to worship you. We are coming with, with our gold to give you the best. Just like we said when we were giving offering, give God the best. They brought gold to bring God an offering that is worth it. Amen. Praise God. And lastly, they brought him man. Man has to do about the anointing oil. The anointing oil, the same man they used to worship God is the same anointing oil that Mary used to wipe Jesus, is to anoint Jesus for his death. So they were saying, God, 
thank you. We are bringing you incense. We are bringing you gold to worship you. We are bringing you mad to say you are king of kings and lord of lords. And with this anointing, we are ushering you into your assignment. Amen. Praise God. We are assigning you into your assignment. This is why King Herod, which you saw here, he was not happy because competition has arrived. How can there be a king when I'm a king? Do you find that with places, you go into a workplace, somebody's already a manager, and they want to promote you into a manager, they say, how can there be a manager when I'm a manager? King Herod didn't like it at all, and he had to create a ploy to say, you know what, I'm going to go, tell me where this king is born, so I can go and worship him also. Amen, praise God. So you got the Jesus story. Now we want to know what has Christ, this king that has been born to us, what is he bringing to our table this morning? Amen, praise God. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 9. Amen, praise God. As we round up our message, amen, praise God. The book of Isaiah chapter 9, praise the Lord, and verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6 to 7. The Bible says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. A shoulder is a place of carrying a heavy load. Jesus doesn't want you to walk alone carrying that load with you. Amen. Whatever you are carrying, it's not Jesus' intention. He is. He wants to take that load off your shoulder. The Bible says, and his name. We know that he was Emmanuel, God with us. These are the benefits of his name. The Bible says his name will be called what? Wonderful. Amen. Praise God. His name will be what? Counselor. Amen. Praise God. His name will be called what? Mighty God. His name will be called Everlasting Father. His name will be called what? The Prince of Peace. Praise the Lord. What's in your name? Amen. Praise God. What's in the name of Jesus? He is wonderful. He is our counselor. He is our mighty God. He is our everlasting father. He is the prince of peace. Oh my God. I love his name. Amen. Praise God. So let's take them one by one. Wonderful. What does it mean? Psalms, um, the book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 3. What does it say? He says, may, O Lord, my God, praise God, Psalms 40 and verse 3. 40, 40 and verse 3. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I'll read it from here. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonders, wonderful works. Amen. Praise God. Thou hast done... Thy thoughts which are unto us, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. I will declare and speak of them. They are more than we can number. Amen. Praise God. And number two, he's a what? He's a counselor. John chapter 14 um, and verse 26. I read it in the Amplified Version, which says of him as a counselor to us. But the comforter, our counselor, our helper... Our intercessors, this is Jesus to us. He's what? Our, our helper, our comforter, our advocate, our intercessor, our counselor, our strengthener, our standby, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and he will help you remember everything I have told you. Amen. So when you have Jesus, you have a counselor who can comfort you, who can be your advocate. If you need a lawyer, he's your advocate. If you need somebody to pray with you, he's your intercessor. Amen. Praise God. He's the one who stands by you. Everywhere you go through a difficult situation, Jesus is by your side. Amen. Praise God. He is our counselor. When you need advice, you go into the word. You go into the word. Amen. Praise Praise God. You go in the word and get some comfort and get some, some advice that will stand, that will be your advocate that you can use against your situation. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And number three, what did I say he is? 
Oh, somebody's listening. He is a mighty God. Amen. He is a mighty God. Amen. Praise God. He is our mighty God. The Lord, according to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17, the Lord your God is in the midst of thee. Amen. Praise God. He is a warrior who saves. He will rejoice over you with joy. Amen. Praise God. The Lord in our midst, he is a mighty God. Trust God. And it doesn't matter what it looks like. He is a mighty God. Amen. Praise God. He is a what? A mighty God. A warrior who saves. Amen. Praise God. And verse number four. And number four. He is an everlasting father. He is the father to the fatherless. He is a father you can rely on. Amen. Praise God. I don't know what's your situation. Some people have had a good relationships with their fathers. Some have not. But our God never changes. Our God is an everlasting father. He's not just your father today and not your father tomorrow because you will argue or anything. He's an everlasting father everlasting father you can come to him and call on him the bible says call unto me in the day of trouble and i will deliver you amen praise god he's your everlasting father you can run to day and night amen the bible says he never sleeps he never slumbers he watches over israel while you are sleeping and snoring god is just admiring you this is my baby this is my son this is my daughter i'm so proud of you i can't wait to bless you i can't I can't wait to show you my ways. I can't, I can't wait to show off with you, to show off the praises of him. Amen. Praise God. I can't wait to show off with you. He's an everlasting father. Amen. He, is no, he has no beginning. He has no end. Therefore, he's from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Praise God. He's from everlasting to everlasting. If you need him, he'll be there. He, he's not a man that he should lie, that he will say something today and say, no, I've changed my mind. God cannot turn his back on his word. Has he promised you, will he not do it good? He's not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he spoken it? Will he not make it good? God will make it good in your life this year. In the name of Jesus, in the new year, God will make it good for you. I don't know what you are believing him for, but God will make it good. Hold Hold on to his word. Hold on to his faithfulness. He is too faithful to fail. Amen. He is too faithful. He will not leave you nor forsake you. No matter what you've done, run back to him. Amen. Whatever you have done, run back to him. Sometimes as children, we grow up, we are from toddlers, we become adolescent, and we think we know it all. Some children during their adolescence then decide to say, you know what? Oh, my parents, I don't agree with them. I'm I'm, 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 I'm not talking to my parents, but he's your everlasting father. You cannot say to God, God, I, I don't talk to you because you haven't blessed me. I haven't seen that miracle. I haven't seen your hand in my life. He will surely come to pass. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. And number five, he is a prince of peace. Jesus is the prince of peace. Amen. Praise God. He is the prince of peace. Wherever Jesus is, there's peace. Wherever you see any turmoil in your life, it means you haven't invited Jesus in that situation. He is the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He slept during the very turbulent times. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 38 to 39, Jesus slept in the storm. That should tell you how much peaceful Jesus is. He was in the hinder part of a ship, asleep on a pillow. Yet there was storms around. Yet there was so much turmoil around. And they awake him and said to him, Master, carry thou that we perish. He was sleeping in the storm. So sleep during your storm. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says, what does it profit us to worry? Do not worry about anything. What you will eat, what you will drink, what you will, you will wear. Do not worry about anything. 
Don't we do that, especially around this time over Christmas? We worry about what will we wear? What will we eat? Who shall we give a present to? What will we buy? What will we dress? We worry about so many things, yet it's only 24 hours is Christmas Day. The rest of the year, what do you do? If you worry about just this one day, which is tomorrow, by midnight today, it will be the 25th of December. And by midnight again, the 25th will be gone. And yet we've spent months worrying. We've spent money worrying about one day of the year. And we forget the essence of Christmas. We forget the essence of Christmas, that he is our prince of peace. We worry, we worry. We, we, we are on the checkout up till the time says, the shops are closed, you need to go now, you need to go. You need to go now, the shops is closed. You cannot buy anymore, you need to go. He is the prince of peace. Don't worry. If you can't buy anybody a present this Christmas, are you going to die over it? If you can't buy a card for a friend, are you going to die over it? Just be peaceful about it. This is the season I'm in. This time I cannot do it. Next year God would have blessed me a million times more. I can do it. It's fine. Why worry about something you cannot change? I was in a shop yesterday and, they, uh, and I was laughing. I just went to get in butter. But the queue, people were pushing and shoving. And, and, you know, and the lady said, you know what? On the 26th, all these things you see here, they'll be on sale. And you can't carry them and return them. And say, oh, I bought an impulse. Just be peaceful. Whatever you find to do this year, don't overstretch yourself. Don't be frustrated. Don't have anxiety over Christmas. It's only one day. Have the essence of the season. If you forgot that it's, we are celebrating Jesus Christ, we are not celebrating Christmas. We are celebrating something else. His presence is better than the present under the tree. His presence in our life is worth more than gold. You can have no present under the tree, but you have joy. Joy of the Lord is my strength. You might not know what you'll put together as a meal, but you have joy in your heart. That when you put that meal, you enjoy it. If you don't have joy, you can put a five-star cuisine and have no appetite. And have no appetite. Let's not forget the essence of this season is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is our Prince of Peace. He's our wonderful counselor. He's our strengthener. He's our standby. He walks with us. He, he lies down with us. He cannot wait to hear our voice when we wake up. He cannot hear, to, he, hear us sing worship and praise his holy name. Just like the angels declared when they saw Mary and say, glory, glory, glory. Glory be in the highest. Glory be in the highest. You have found favor with God. You have found favor with God. The reason that you are in church today, you have found favor with God. God will visit you with favor. Remember, he is the reason for this season. He is our reason for our existence. He is our reason we have joy and peace in our heart. He is the reason we can come before him and, and, and feel like we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. All, you may be alone, but if you are alone with Jesus... Much better. Much better. Much better. It's much better to have your time with God than have a lot of people around you who will not add anything in your life. Amen. Most of the time we do things to please people all around us. And the thing is, they will shut their door and go and you think, wow, why did I do that? Alone with Jesus. You see, even if you, you're present, the presence of God is saturating your life, I tell you, you'll enjoy this season. Amen. Praise God. Let's not stress. The Bible says, do not worry about anything. Do not worry about anything. Christmas, like I said, is one day. 
We have a lifetime with God. Let's establish that relationship with him. He is our peace. He is a, he's the one who calms the storms in our lives. This is a time to reflect and say, Jesus, thank you for sacrificing and be born in a manger. Though you deserve a royal birth in a private hospital somewhere where you were waited on by your servants and everything, you decided to choose a manger, the lowest form of birth, to show us humility, to show us humility that you know what you came here to lead us you are our shepherd that's why i love psalms 23 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want he leads me beside the still waters amen praise god he leads me besides the still waters he leads me beside the still waters even though I walk through the valley of death, I shall fear no evil. I don't know what, what valley of death you see. You will, you will survive. You will fear no evil. Because you are walking with who? We are walking with Jesus. You are walking with him. The Bible says his rod and his staff, they comfort me. His word is my strength. When I feel low, I go into, this, into his word. Amen. When I feel low, I go to his word and comfort myself in his his word. Amen. Praise God. The Bible says he prepares a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Amen. He prepares. God is preparing a table for you in the presence of your enemies. What is he doing? He is anointing your head with oil and your cup is running over. Your cup is running what? Over. Your cup is running what? Over. Amen. Praise God. Your cup will run over this season in the name of Jesus. You will not lack oil in your life. You will not lack oil on your head. You will not lack joy on your head. Amen. Praise God. You will not lack joy. You will not lack joy in your life because what? You have the Prince of Peace. He's our wonderful God. He is our counselor. He is our, he was, he is our everything. Everything you need has been supplied. Everything you need Everything has been supplied. God is able to mend the broken hearts. He's the one who can super glue hearts together. You think it's over? God can super glue you together. Amen. Praise God. Just spend time in his presence. In his presence, there are pleasures forevermore. In his presence, there is joy and there are pleasures forevermore. Run into his presence. Amen. Don't run on empty like a car. Don't run on an empty fuel and think, oh, you know what? I'll get to the word after the festive season is over. No. He is the reason for this season. I pray that all the families in the world during Christmas Day, you take time to pray together. Don't just prepare a meal and say, come, come, let's have a feast. Why are we coming to have a feast? Just to socialize. His presence is everything. His presence means everything. Take anything away from me, like David said. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. I'm nothing without the Holy Spirit. You are nothing without his Holy Spirit. We are nothing. We are just but vessels. Greater is he who is in where? In us. In me. Greater is he who is in me. The same baby we saw in a manger. How awesome is it to know he's resident in my heart. I carry God everywhere. I carry the king of kings everywhere. Everywhere I go, God, you are with me. When I feel scared, God, you are my strength now. When I'm afraid, God, you are here with me. How can I be afraid when you are here? When sickness begins to torment your body, you say, how can sickness have the audacity to be in my body when Jesus is in my body? That's the confidence we have. He's a wonderful Emmanuel. He is God with us. I don't know where you need him this morning, but he is God with us. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It doesn't matter the amount of letters that are threatening you coming to your address. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. 
all that matters is I have my counselor. I have my defender. I have my wisest counselor who is with me, who will show me the way. He says, you will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way to go. Don't let the noise of this season drown his voice. Don't let the, the noise of this season drown his voice. Amen. To a place where you feel, oh, why am I so empty? Without him, we are nothing. I don't know about you, but he came for only one reason. He came to earth. The Bible says in the book of Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Have you missed your way this year? Has anybody missed his way this year and you don't know where you are going? Things are, are going helter-skelter everywhere. Jesus came for this one reason. To seek and to save that which was lost. You know when you are lost because you feel uneasy. Why am I here? Why are things happening to me? You are lost. You've missed your way. Today, God wants you to find your way into his house. Just like the prodigal son left his father's house. He left his father's house and took everything that belonged to him, that he thought belonged to him, and went and squandered it all. He squandered it all. He finished it all. But then the Bible says, then he came to himself. He came to himself. He says, why am I feeding with pigs? What am I doing here? I must go into my father's house. I must go into my father's house. I must go into my father's house. He has prepared a meal for me. When the father, this everlasting father, saw him, he welcomed him with a biggest smile and said, son, come home. Son, daughter, come home. You've wandered off a long way. You've wandered off a long way. You've, do, you've done things your own way. And it's not working. Come home. Come home. I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. Jesus says, come home. Come home. Whatever you've done, it's fine. Come home. Come home. Home is where you belong. The party is waiting for you in the house. The biggest party is for you to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in your heart. That's the biggest party we need to be celebrating. Let's close our eyes. If you are one of those people, Jesus came here on earth for. Today is your moment. Today is your reason for this season. Today, Jesus is calling you, just like that prodigal son, to say, come home. You belong here. You belong here. I didn't send you away. You belong here. You've tried everything. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Every time you hit a gridlock, you know you've done it your own way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you want to give your life to Jesus, this is your moment. What a beautiful service to give your life to. Remembering our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for us. He was born in a manger. A king born in a manger. He took the lowest form so that you will not take that lowest form. So you not go that low. You cannot feed with pigs. You cannot feed with animals. You cannot lie in a manger. Because he did it all for us. Thank you, Father. Your presence is like heaven to us. Your presence is like heaven to us, Lord. Father, we thank you. If you that one, let's say this prayer. We want to say this prayer together. Dear Jesus, oh, let's mean it. Let's say it from the depth of our heart. If we are rededicating our lives to Jesus, this is the best time to do it. Dear Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Today, I give my life to you. I've done it my way. It has not worked. I choose to give my life back to you. I accept you as Lord and Savior in my heart. I believe that you were born and you died. 
and you rose again and you are seated with our heavenly father in heavenly places therefore today is my receiving day today I am born again I accept you as Lord over my life I accept you as Lord over my finances I accept you as Lord over my family today I am born again if you said that prayer and meant it from the depth of your heart you are born again today today you begin a new day it's a new page for you Jesus the Bible says he's wiped everything that you've ever done wrong everything everything you've ever done wrong today he's given you a clean slate of life everything you've ever done everything you've ever done has been erased and he's thrown the eraser in the sea of forgetfulness you're a new creature today he's your savior he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. Thank you, Jesus. Your presence is like heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I surrender, Lord. Let's sing him. I surrender to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. I surrender. Unto you, O oh God, oh, unto Thee, my blessed say, I surrender, Lord. I surrender. Oh, I surrender. I surrender. Oh, let's surrender to Him this morning. Let's surrender. I surrender, Lord. I surrender unto Jesus. To Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Oh, I surrender, oh, I surrender. Oh, yes, Lord, we surrender everything to you, Jesus. I surrender unto you, my Lord, unto thee. Blessed Savior, unto Thee, blessed Savior, I surrender. Oh. Father, we give You honor, we give You glory. On this beautiful day, we surrender our lives to You. We rededicate our lives. Father, we thank you. May we remember the reason for this season. That greater is he who is in us than the one who is in the world. We thank you, Lord. We will go with this confidence. Knowing that we can face everything with you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor, Lord. Be magnified in our lives, Lord. Be magnified in the lives of every member of this church. Be magnified in the members' lives, Lord. Every member of Solution Chapel International, be magnified in their lives, Lord. We give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, the saints say amen. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Once welcome our senior pastor, amen.